Land of the free, home of the brave, a nation with its fair share of myths. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. In this installment, we'll be looking at the biggest and longest running myths behind some of the United States' most famous icons. And when asked about it, he said, I didn't fail. I found out 2,000 ways how not to make a light bulb, but he only needed to find one way to make it work. Myth number five, Orson Welles and his War of the Worlds broadcast caused nationwide panic. Of the creatures in the rocket cylinder at Grover's Mill, I can give you no authoritative information, either as to their nature, their origin, or their purposes here on Earth. The 1938 Orson Welles broadcast of the War of the Worlds novel might have caused some stir during its day, but the actual panicked fallout wasn't quite as widespread as you've been led to believe. Although it's true that some people did likely believe the legendary broadcast was a true-to-life news report of an alien invasion, the real truth to this myth lies behind the fact that not many people were listening to the radio program in the first place. For starters, Wells' show was going up against some tried-and-true programming with established fan bases. Additionally, some CBS stations cut the program to avoid such panic, whereas some other stations included notices during the commercials that the aliens weren't actually invading. The real reason why this myth persists to this day is because newspapers, which were in fierce competition with the radio, pushed this idea to the forefront of their pages in an effort to cut down radio's reputation to their readers. And there before my eyes, stark and silent, lay the Martians with the hungry birds pecking and tearing brown shreds of flesh. Myth number four, Walt Disney, or just his head, is cryogenically frozen. Oh hey, did they ever unfreeze Walt Disney? Uh, unfortunately. Welcome back, Mr. Disney. Are the Jews gone yet? Uh, no. Put me back in. <laughs> okay, let's get this one out in the open right now. Walt Disney is not frozen, nor is any part of his body preserved through human cryogenics. The Disney founder was profoundly interested in the subject, however. Going as far as to have people at his Walt Disney Studio call the president of the California Cryogenic Society, Bob Nelson, asking an abundance of questions about their facility and what went into the cryogenic process. The truth behind this myth then likely stems from an interview that Nelson did with the Los Angeles Times, where he mentioned how he felt that Walt, judging from his interest, wanted to be frozen, despite the fact that Disney was in fact cremated after his battle with lung cancer. Cryonics. It was a kind of fad in the late 20th century. People feared dying. It terrified them. The other interesting factoid about this myth is that two weeks after Disney's death was the first time a man was ever cryogenically frozen. Myth number three, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. We're just gonna take a wild guess that you dig myths since you're here. Well, it turns out that Thomas Edison also enjoyed a good myth, especially those surrounding himself and his abilities. One popular myth about this famous inventor claims that Edison invented the light bulb. The light bulb. The light bulb. The phonograph. The kinetoscope. It goes on and on and on. Well, this isn't true. Although it is a fact that the incandescent bulbs were an Edison invention, which is a longer burning addition and improvement to the already existing light bulb. You know, Thomas Edison tried and failed nearly 2,000 times to develop the carbonized cotton thread filament for the incandescent light bulb. Edison's invention made the light bulb more affordable and practical for homeowners to illuminate their homes. But this wasn't the first time Edison would stretch the truth. For example, his claim that he was a self-taught genius was debunked by Time magazine in 1979, where a profile revealed that Edison not only attended school as a child, but also took chemistry classes in New York City. Naughty, naughty. I've got an idea, the light bulb. I'm Edison, thank you, and everyone claps. Myth number two, Betsy Ross made the first American flag. Let's face it, the idea of a humble seamstress sewing up that classic design of the American flag is one that warms the hearts of United States citizens every Independence Day. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of evidence to support this myth of Philadelphia's Betsy Ross sewing the first American flag. For starters, the history behind Ross's involvement with the flag didn't begin making the rounds until nearly a century after America's War of Independence against England, when her grandson, William Canby, provided an oral history of the tale passed down by his family to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. It's true that Betsy Ross did sew flags for the Pennsylvania Navy, but there are no mentions or records of Miss Ross being tasked by a congressional flag committee and George Washington, as per Canby's story, to create a template which would become the Stars and Stripes of America. I haven't been this disillusioned since I found out that Betsy Ross did design the American flag. I mean, she was my role model. Myth number one, George Washington had wooden teeth. There are an abundance of myths surrounding the first president of the United States, Colonel George Washington, from chopping down a cherry tree to this number one American myth on our list. 
Did George Washington actually have wooden teeth? I would remember a man with wooden teeth. Well, President Washington did have extremely poor dental hygiene and began losing his teeth early on in life. Man, you should really brush your teeth more because that is not normal. Oh, oh, yes. oh Charlie, stop pulling your teeth out They're like that, man. Right freaking me out. He would eventually have false teeth constructed from a number of different sources. These included ivory, lead, and even teeth from the mouths of various humans, all held together by metal fasteners. The dentures worn by Washington during his inauguration were made with gold, brass, and hippopotamus ivory, thanks to the fact that only one surviving original tooth was left in his mouth. And when that one went, Washington gave it to the dentist as a keepsake. Okay, okay Charlie, now you gotta stop. You're really gonna stop. Just give them to me. Give me all the teeth. Okay, I got them in my pocket. So which of these myths did you believe? This is what Google searchers are asking about American icons. Did George Washington ever smile? Is Orson Welles related to H.G. Wells? Can Walt Disney be revived? Put Walt Disney's head on the phone. Then wake it up! For more patriotic top 10s and star-spangled top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You're trying to sully Edison's good name, and nobody messes with my man Tom!